Hello there, Jeff with the Big Shooterist channel. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, firearms rights um, are under siege and they're being discussed in the United States Senate and soon the House of Representatives. The buzzword of the day is assault rifle and modern sporting rifle and we're going to give you a little presentation that hopefully will help make sense of all of this mess. Stick around. This is a Ruger Ranch rifle. Um, I don't think it looks like anything anyone would expect to see uh, the band covering. It is a semi-automatic and a semi-automatic is a design that's well over 100 years old. It's been around and in use for over a hundred years. Um, most of your sporting firearms uh, use this semi-automatic design. All it means is it's not automatic, it's semi-automatic. So you have one round that chambers and fires each time you squeeze the trigger as opposed to an automatic which continues to fire as long as the trigger is held back. We're not discussing automatics in any of this legislation. Those have been heavily regulated uh, and banned for manufacture for individual ownership since 1986. So the guns that we're discussing today are only those that are semi-automatic and sometimes those that look like the automatics. And most people wouldn't look at this gun and say, yes, it has to be banned. However, there's not a lot of common sense going into this, and there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. So let me give you a little demonstration. Um, and I'll ask with a show of hands. Of course, I can't see, so we'll have to play on the honor system. Who would consider this firearm an assault weapon? Excellent. Take note of that. So here is the firearm. All we've done is remove the stock. This is the gun itself. This is the heart of the firearm. This is it. Um, this would be maybe equivalent to the engine in an automobile. This is this is where it derives everything from. The stock is just for logs. Now, having removed the stock, let's have another show of hands. Who would consider this an assault rifle? Um, and before you answer that, let's ask ourselves: Is it any more powerful than it just was? Now. Is it any more accurate than it just was? No. Has anything changed mechanically? Does it fire any faster? Or, um, no. It's the same gun. All we did is remove the stock. So let's have that show of hands. Who would consider this the same Ruger Mini 30 with no stock and assault rifle? Okay. Write that down. So let's make another change to it. <clears throat> let's change the stock. The stock has absolutely nothing to do with it. This is, by the way, a factory Ruger stock. And let's reinstall the trigger group. And let's think about this rifle. Now, has the rifle changed at all? Is it any more powerful? No. Is it any more accurate? Nope. Does it fire any faster? Nope. Absolutely nothing has changed except it now has a folding stock. So it doesn't perform any different. It only looks different. And where this firearm in this new loosely interpreted assault weapons legislation may not be an assault weapon, it shouldn't be an assault weapon, this one absolutely would be an assault weapon. And we haven't done anything except change the looks. Now that we've discussed the mechanics a little bit, let's look into the firearm that seems to be the specific firearm that's being targeted today um, by, all, by all this new legislation, the one that we keep hearing about, the AR-15 platform firearm. Um, let's talk a little bit about some facts. This gun, this design, has been around since the late 50s. It's been available to civilians in its current format since the early 1960s. As a matter of fact, the earliest ads that I have when this gun was originally for sale from the 1960s um, show it at about $179 and 
before 1968, Colt just used to ship it or their distributor right to your home. So these are not some new, modern, um, amazing type of machine that our forefathers could never have uh, foreseen, like I've heard some people say. This, not only is the action, the semi-automatic action, uh, common, relative, and in most people's hunting closets, um, and have been around for over a century, but this exact firearm, the AR-15 family of guns, has been around for almost 50 years in itself. The problem is, they look like the gun you see on the news. They look like the gun that the military uses. They look like the M4 or the M16. But like we uh, explained on the Ruger Ranch Rifle, the Mini 30, what it looks like has absolutely nothing to do with what's inside, with how it operates. If you take your car and paint uh, racing stripes on it, you can't enter it in the Daytona 500. It, it, it just isn't going to perform that way. So these guns may look like the military gun, but that's as far as it goes. Contrary to popular belief in the news anyway, it is used every day for hunting. It is used for sporting. It is used for self-defense. It is used for competition. There are millions and millions of these firearms out there. And they only fire one round each time you squeeze the trigger. Let's demonstrate. That's it. Just like the hunting rifles that don't look anything like this, but operate on exactly the same principle. Let's look at the firearms that they're often confused with, the military firearms, the machine guns, and explain a little something about those that you don't hear regularly. This firearm is the one that most of the reports seem to lead us to believe they're discussing. This is the military firearm. This is the one that uh, is similar to those that our military uses. It looks just like the other one, but the engine, the internals are different. This is a full automatic firearm. These have been restricted since the 1930s. They were banned from importation in 1968, and they were banned for manufacture for individual ownership in 1986. So these guns have been against the law to manufacture for individual ownership for an awful long time. And these are not the guns that we're discussing today. The guns that today's legislation discusses simply look like these. Let's demonstrate the firearm that we're not discussing in any of this legislation. But a lot of people seem to believe we are. You see the difference there? This firearm has absolutely nothing in common with this firearm other than its outward appearance, and that's all. Obviously, it doesn't make much sense to ban a firearm based on what it looks like, as ridiculous as that even sounds. We tried it in 1994, all the way to 2004, had zero impact on violent crime. Uh, while it was banned and the violent crime rate has continued to go down since the ban has sunset uh, nine years ago. So if we're looking at numbers, there are no numbers that justify yeah. There's no problem today with modern sporting rifles, with semi-automatics, with any firearms in the law-abiding public's hands. The only problem with firearms are with those that misuse them and you don't treat that with more laws to ignore. It doesn't even begin to make sense. Well, I hope this video gave you a little bit of uh, educational ammunition to use in this fight. It's going to be long. Um, they, they try to get things done as fast as they can, so these little factual details and discussions don't have time to get out. But now there's been a little bit of time that's passed since they're called to act fast and act now. And thanks to you, and, and so many people uh, all around the country writing their senators and legislators and visiting them 
and, and YouTubers and Facebookers and people just spreading the word everywhere, spreading the truth and sharing knowledge, um, hopefully we can grind this one to a halt too. But it's not going to happen on its own. We have to continue to educate like we've never educated before. And if we need some education, let's accept it with open arms. And I learn as much from you as you may from me. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the video and took something from it. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends. And until next time, have fun and be safe. <laughs>